Hello, welcome to SmartBird 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. I'm an instructional technology specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. In today's segment, we're going to be talking about the Smart Response System. The Smart Response System allows teachers and students to communicate more effectively in their classroom, and it does this in many different ways. For example, it allows a teacher to poll for understanding of their students on the fly. It also allows a teacher to give great results back from examinations and quizzes much faster back to their students. In addition, it allows a student to ask questions back to the teacher in a more friendlier environment. But most importantly, it works in conjunction with your Smart Notebook lessons, which allows you to receive constant feedback from your students as you are teaching your lessons. So let's go and take a look at the Smart Responder and see what actually makes up the resp Smart Response system. So let me go to my computer over here. And the first thing, of course, you're going to need is a software. And it comes with the kit already in there. But if you're missing the software, you can go ahead and download it from the Smart Tech website. Just simply Google it and go Smart Tech and look for uh, Smart Response. It'll come up for you to download if you do not have the disk. The next thing it has, of course, is the actual uh, remote responders or the clickers that the students are going to use. But what makes this a really great uh, over other products that are on the market is you do not have to actually assign the clicker to the actual student. The student simply types in their student ID and it finds itself on the computer gradebook for that way you can consistently see the grades. I don't have to can say, well, you know, uh, the, the remote number one needs to go to student number two and so forth. So we're just consistently, uh, it's a really great remote that we have here. And the last thing that we're going to use is what's called the smart receiver. And the receiver, of course, allows to receive the information from the actual responders here. So those are the three main components that we need. But so let's go ahead and set up our, our set up our smart response system to use in our classroom. So the very first thing we need to do after we've installed our software is to actually go ahead and plug this in into our USB port so that way we can name our classroom. And naming your classroom pretty much names the responder or the actual receiver that, that I have here. And so I'll go and talk more about that after I go in and plug this in. Okay, I plugged it in. And right now I'm getting a red, uh, a red signal here. And on my computer screen, it should be late loading up here of a USB. And I'm waiting for that to happen. There it goes, smart response system starting. Please wait before turning on the clicker. So we're not going to turn on the clickers just yet. And notice now, I don't know if you can see it on my, my light on, on my camera over here, is it was blinking red and now it's blinking green, which is fine. So you can kind of see it right there. It's now blinking green. So what I have to do now is actually name the, is create a classroom which names this particular responder. So we're going to put this down. And I'm going to go to my computer screen here. And on the very bottom right of my system tray, let me see if I can zoom in here real quickly, I have a new, a new actual uh, icon that's down here. Let me move it back over here. And you can see it. It's going to be a, like a yellow beige or a square with like a little remote clicker on it. And when I, let me go ahead and escape from that just for a moment and put my cursor there. So it says smart response. Let me blow that up again for you. And now you can see it's a smart response and it's that particular icon. It's the, again, it's the brown one with the green, uh, the white clicker. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on that icon. And when I do, I get a menu screen that opens up. What I want to choose is configure smart response hardware. So that way I can go ahead and name my responder and name my classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And when I do, it takes a little while to open up because it is a very large program. And there it goes. And it says type a name for your receiver and then click begin. So I'm going to call and call mine EPISD. So I'm going to do all capital letters EPISD. And I'm going to go ahead and click on begin. And notice up here what it says, your classroom name appears on clickers. It can be a maximum of eight characters. So you don't want to go exceed those eight characters on that. So I'm going to click on begin. OK. So after I click on begin, it puts me automatically into what's called anonymous mode. That pretty much allows the teachers to poll the students uh, anonymously for their answers. But of course, we don't always want to go in and use that. We want to go ahead now and create a grade book. 
So that way we can go ahead and add all our classes in the gradebook and then add our students. Now there are different ways of doing this. If you happen to have all of your students on an Excel file or a CSV file, you can import your, your, your classes directly using that import feature. But today, I don't really have that with us, so we're going to go ahead and add the kids or our students manually into the system. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is on my, when I go back to my computer, right now it says classroom name is EPISD and the anonymous class is running. But I'm going to go down here below where it says create a new smart teacher file. Let me see if I can blow that up so you can really see that well. It says create new sp smart teacher file and set up your class list. So I'm going to go and click on that. And now I want to go ahead and put a name for my grade book. And so I'm going to put my title up here is Mr. Rocha. My first name is Robert. And the kids will not see that, so don't be afraid of putting in your first name. And if you wanted to, you could put your school and your district, but it's not really required. And then you want to simply click on Save right here. And again, let me blow that up so you can really see that. There you go. And once you name all that information right there, you simply want to click on the Save button. I'm going to click on Save. And here, it's going to open up in a pop-up window to put into either my documents or somewhere. I really would not in, uh, to put this on your desktop. I would save it in my documents here because it's going to be like a smart notebook file icon that's going to be there, except instead of it being blue, it's going to be brown. So let me click on here, file name Robert Rocha. That's fine. Let me just save that here. Okay. And so now to work, with, now I get the same anonymous mode back, and that's okay. So I'm going to go back down here where it says, to work with class lists, assessments, and reports, switch to the gradebook view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on gradebook view. It's that very bottom in the red. Let me click on that one here. OK. So now I'm in my gradebook mode. And it says here, Mr. Roach's gradebook. Um, if you're only running assessments, you can switch to basic view, which we're fine. Now here, if I click on add a class, that's going to allow you to actually import, again, using a, an Excel file or a CSV file that you may have. But of course, we're not going to demonstrate that today. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add everything manually. So if we go and look over to my left-hand side of my screen, or my navigation area over here. So let me go and click on and blow that up over here. And notice here under my gradebook, and green, it has anonymous mode. And then I had add a, add a class. What I'm going to go ahead and do is click on Add a Class. And I'm going to call this Period 1. And if I, I wanted to, I could add more information there, Period 1 location. Um, my passing rate, I'm going to change that to 70% because in Texas, it's 70% of the passing rate. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Add. I'm, let me blow it up again just to make sure because I know sometimes in the video we can't see everything very well. And there we are. And so I, I named my class period one. I left the other information out there uh, not really important. I put my passing grade as 70. And I'm simply going to, going to click on Add Next. OK. Now, if I had more class periods, I would go ahead and continue adding the rest of my class periods. But for the sake of our, our, our show today, I'm simply going to go now and start adding my students. So. Notice up here, when I go back into my class, period one, I have a tab that runs across here that says Home, Students, or Assessments. What I want to do right now is I want to click on the students. Okay. So here, I'm going to blow my page up here to kind of see it. Now, there's one thing that I need to mention to you that's really, really important that a lot of times we tend to overlook. Now, notice in the upper right-hand corner, it says privacy is on. And what Smart Notebook has done, or Smart Response has done, is it allows that the student ID and their names, or actually the student IDs, to be blurred out. So that way, if you're viewing class results in front of your students of things that you have done, it blurs it out so no one, the students cannot see their answers uh, as far as the actual the grade results. But you can see an overall view of everything. And so when I'm adding my students right now, I need to turn the privacy off 
so way I can go ahead and see all that I think, all the uh, information that I am typing. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of this uh, wrong button. I click on privacy is off, and now to add my first student, I click on that little radio button under home. I'm going to click here, and it opens up a menu field here in the very bottom. Let me blow it up so you can kind of see that a little bit. And so now I can simply type in the student ID, the first name, their last name. If I wanted to, I can do their email. And I, if also, too, I can tag them. So let's say you wanted to tag, let's say they're uh, left students or they're, they're bilingual students or they're GT, uh, G, uh, uh, GT students. You can go ahead and tag that particular student. So when you're looking for grade results later, you can actually do a search or create uh, uh, reports based on those tags. So let me go ahead and escape this here. And I'm going to type in student one. Actually, for student one, I'm going to change, give, here, give a number. I'm going to call this uh, student one. ID is one student. And so here, once I've finished here, I simply click on the next button. There's no button, so if you notice here, there's nothing here to save. So once I click it, it automatically saves and puts it to the very top of my menu screen. And I can go ahead and keep adding more and more students into my system. So this is pretty much how you, you add students, you create your classes, and name your class within the Smart Response system. So this pretty much wraps it up for today's show. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us or at, our, at our Facebook page or at our, at our, our Weebly page, and we'll try to answer them on, on the air as best we can. All right, have a good day.